Welcome to the Seasystem channel. Our topic for today is proteins. Why do we need them? How much do we need on a daily basis? The quality of proteins and food sources of proteins. My name is Abuzar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the Seasystem channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport nutrition. Okay, today we are going to discuss about the proteins. Why do we need them? How do we calculate our daily protein intakes, the quality of proteins, and food sources of proteins? Definitely, there are lots of information out there about the proteins, and also there are some confusions. And through this presentation, we are going to clear those uh, confusions. This presentation is going to be in four parts. In the first part, we talk the reasons that you need protein on a daily basis. In the second part, I'm going to show you how you can calculate your daily protein intake. In part three, we discuss the quality of different proteins. And in part four, we talk about the food sources of proteins. Let's go with part one. Why do we need proteins on a daily basis? You need proteins on a daily basis for seven reasons. I have listed those seven reasons on the board for you and let's review together. Number one, for energy. Proteins are macronutrients that they can generate calories. One gram protein is gonna generate four calories. During your daily activities and especially when you exercise, the primary source of your energy is carbohydrates followed by fats. And when your body runs out of carbohydrates and fats, then proteins, they're gonna come into play to generate calorie for you. Number two, tissue growth and maintenance. Proteins are a component of every single cells and tissues in the body. But let's keep in mind that about 18% of your body weight is proteins. And every single cells and tissues in the body uh, needs protein on a daily basis for their constant turnover. Number three, immune system. Your immune system produces antibodies to protect you against many microbes. Those antibodies, they are proteins. Number four, Hormones and enzymes. There are thousands of hormones and enzymes in the body. They are proteins. Number five, acid and base balance. Proteins, they act as blood buffers. You know, they help you know, keep your blood pH level within normal limits. Number six, fluid balance. Two proteins, albumin and globulin, they play a key role in maintaining uh, water inside the vascular system and preventing from edema. And reason number seven is transportation. The carriers that transport nutrients in the blood, they are proteins. I'm gonna give you two examples. Hemoglobin, which basically is in the red blood cells and carries oxygen. Hemoglobin, it's a kind of protein. And lipoproteins, that they carry fats in the blood, they are proteins. Now you know the reasons why we need proteins on a daily basis. Let's go with part two. How much protein do we need on a daily basis? Your daily protein intake depends on three factors, your age, your physical activity level and the medical conditions if you have any. Let me show you exactly how much protein do you need on a daily basis based on those three factors. But let's keep in mind that the numbers that I'm gonna put in here for you today, they are for adults. For children and teenagers, we can have a separate video in the future. Okay, let's go with adults. If you are a healthy and non-athletic person, you are a healthy person, you don't have any medical conditions, and also you do not exercise. This is the protein you need. You need 0 0.8 gram per kg per day. 
let's say your body weight is 60 kg, 60 times 0 0.8, you're gonna need 48 grams protein in a day. And in kidney failure with dialysis, someone has a kidney failure and the person on dialysis, over their protein intake is gonna go up a little bit. We're gonna need 1.2 gram per kg. And if someone has kidney failure, but the person is not on dialysis, over their protein intake is gonna go down. We're gonna need 0 0.6 gram per kg per day. And in weight management, because our goal is to speed up metabolism, definitely daily protein intake has to go up. How much? We're gonna need 1.5 gram per kg per day. And if there is a, any kind of metabolic stresses, such as you had burns, you had infections, you had a fever, you had a trauma, you had any kind of surgeries, uh, over there your protein intake is gonna go up and you're gonna need 1.5 grams per kg per day. And if you are a recreational exerciser, you are not a professional athlete, and you just exercise basically to stay healthy. Over there, your daily protein intake is gonna be anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 gram per kg. And among athletes, depends on what kind of sports they are doing. In endurance sports, they're gonna need 1.4 gram per kg. In ball sports, such as basketball, volleyball, they're gonna need 1.6 grams per kg. And in strength sports, they can need two grams per kg per day. But let's keep in mind that studies show taking two grams per kg protein by healthy individuals is considered safe. And the tolerable upper limits of daily protein intake is 3.5 grams per kg. But if you are planning to take more than two grams per kg per day in the long term, this is something that we never suggest and it should be avoided. Because taking more than two grams protein per kg per day in the long term could lead to some abnormalities in the GI system, in the kidneys, in the vascular system, and also even in the bones. And definitely in the future, we can have a video about consequences of too much protein. Let's go with part three. In terms of quality, not every single protein that you take on a daily basis are the same. So what is a good quality protein then? You know, when we are evaluating the quality of proteins, we're gonna keep in mind two important uh, factors. Complete protein versus incomplete proteins and biologic value. Let's go with uh, complete and incomplete proteins. Why do we call them complete and incomplete proteins? As you know, proteins are made of amino acids. There are about 23 of them. You know, some books they say 24 and some say 25, but for now let's go with 23 amino acids in total. Nine of those amino acids, we call them essential amino acids. Why? Because your body cannot produce them inside your body, but you need them. And I have listed those nine amino acids uh, on the board for you. We call them these nine amino acids essential amino acids because we need them but our bodies cannot make them. And I have marked this one, uh, this amino acid histidine. This is an essential amino acid in infants and babies, not in adults. So we call them complete protein. Why? That means that protein has all those nine essential amino acids. So if a protein has all those nine essential amino acids, we call them complete protein. And if a protein doesn't have one of those essential amino acids, we call them incomplete protein. Even though some experts, they do not believe in this classification, you know, complete protein versus incomplete proteins, but still you see that uh, in many books. 
Here are examples for complete proteins. All animal-based proteins are complete proteins, dairy products, meats, eggs. They are complete uh, proteins. And soy and spirulina. Soy and spirulina, even though they are plant-based proteins, but they are considered definitely complete proteins. And incomplete proteins, here are examples. Legumes, nuts, and seeds. Now you know why do we call them incomplete proteins? Because they are missing one or more of those amino acids, those nine essential amino acids. For examples, the protein that comes from nuts and seeds, they are very, very low, almost none, in this one, lysine. Lysine is one of the most important amino acids, especially it's an essential amino acid for the body, and we know that uh, the protein in nuts and seeds are very, very low in lysine amino acid. That's why they are called uh, incomplete proteins. The second factor is this, biologic value. Biologic value uh, is this, the ratio of retained nitrogen to absorbed nitrogen. You know, when they are evaluating the quality of uh, proteins in medicine and nutrition, they use different methods, and definitely biologic value is the most valid one. And in medicine, the biologic value of an egg is considered 100. So, in medicine and nutrition, the biologic value of an egg is 100, and other proteins are compared to egg. Whey protein, which is a, basically comes from a dairy product, is 104. Milk is 91, biologic value. Meats could be anywhere between 79 to 83. And casein, another protein that comes from dairy, is 77. Soy is 74. Legumes could be anywhere between 58 to uh, 73. And corn protein is 60. Okay, now you know how you can choose a good quality protein. A good quality protein is the one that has higher biologic value and has all those nine essential amino acids. Let's go with part four. What are the food sources of proteins? There are many books and reliable websites that you can find there a long list of food items with their protein contents. But let's review together the most common food sources of proteins. Let's go with animal-based proteins. Egg. One medium egg is gonna give us about six grams protein. Cheese. Hard cheese. One ounce hard cheese is going to give us about 7 grams protein. Cottage cheese. One cup of cottage cheese is going to give us about 28 grams protein. Yogurt. Regular yogurt. One cup of regular yogurt is going to give us 10 grams protein. And one cup of Greek yogurt is going to give us protein anywhere between 16 to 18 grams and one cup milk it doesn't matter it's one person two person or whole milk protein is the same one cup is going to give us eight grams meats fish chicken beef protein pretty much is the same one ounce of any kind of meats is going to give us about eight grams protein and there is a kind of uh, meat, it's called luncheon meat. Uh, the amount of protein in luncheon meat is a little bit lower. Five grams per one ounce. And plant-based proteins, beans or legumes. One cup is going to give us 16 grams protein. Nuts, one cup is going to give us 35 grams protein. And spirulina, one cup is going to give us about 60 grams protein and tofu it depends on uh, if it's soft or hard F tofu firm if it's three ounces is going to give us about 10 grams protein 
Now you know the most common food sources of proteins. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss the videos that we post on a regular basis on CSSN channel, you can subscribe to our channel. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.